welcome Red Hat President of Products and Technologies, Paul Cormier. Wow, good morning. 12 summits. Can you imagine 12 summits? And you know, I, I think back um, to the first one <clears throat> and how much you know, we thought then you know, innovation was changing and technology was changing. And you know, I'd like to say that you know, we, we sort of had the vision that 12 years from now we'd be standing here knowing what we know now and doing what we do now. But almost, but not quite, because I tell you, it is amazing what's happened over the, over the last 12 years. IT is evolving at just an amazing pace right now. Some people call it digital transformation or mode one or mode two. Some say it's a path to the hybrid cloud or maybe cloud native IT. You know, the industry and the industry analysts, they all have different names on what it is. But it's the same market forces that are causing the role of IT to change at such a rapid pace. And I would like to think that the people in this room, the people at Red Hat, the open source community, that is the change that's driven this for the last 12 to 15 years at the pace it's at. If you look at it from, a, from an, an aspect of architecture, platform, process, and platforms, that's how we like to look at this change. But th those three things, architecture, process, and platforms, are changing almost simultaneously from both an infrastructure and an applications perspective at once, all at once. I want to take a look in this talk of how and why that's happening in both places, because that's the real dynamic now, is how that change is happening in both of those places and how those changes are melting together to really bring us to the next generation with technology and capability like we've never seen before. So first, let's take a look what's happening on the infrastructure side. You know, the infrastructure, as I said, it's, it's changing rapidly, and it has been. And it, and it really started with Linux, with the innovation of Linux, and then Linux coming to the enterprise. And that's really where it started. We started with Linux really as a commodity play. It really was a way to commoditize the computing platform to get more power at, at less cost. But what's happened really is we've moved from that commodity play to have, because technology now is so readily available in, in the open source world, it's really moved to drive where all the innovations happen. We're really moving from proprietary to open, even in the application model as well. It's all about the application, and that's the model that's changing right now. We're moving from single footprints to a combination of physical, physical, virtual, private, and public cloud for the infrastructure all at once. Storage and networking architectures are also changing, so they have to be more accessible anywhere to support that diverse and distributed architecture. Common management and consistency across all are required. Management has to retool right now because of such drastic changes in that infrastructure. Um, if, if we don't do this, we'll have an unmanageable set of infrastructure, and we, we just can't have that. We're changing all this, um, we're changing all this simultaneously. And, and that's what's happening right now. And this is the way to sustain it long term, to have all the pieces move and change at once and together with common infrastructure. You know, while open source development is driving the technical innovation at this pace, the need for stability in the enterprise, it just doesn't go away. We want to consume this change in, in, in technology in the enterprise, but the need for companies to still run their business and have the stable platforms on it, it just doesn't go away. And in order to support this, new tools and processes are needed for that infrastructure layer that, that support and change as we go along. As software life cycles needed to be, software life cycles still need to be changed, tracked, and maintained across this new architecture. And that's where a lot of the change in the tool side is going on right now as well. We bring architecture, tools, and process changes to, as integrated, usable platforms to our customer base. That's how we accomplish this at Red Hat. The platforms we deliver bring consistency to the application across the new footprints. This is just how enterprises use Linux. 
going to the cloud, going to the open hybrid cloud, it's all about bringing the application to this new, new architecture. This is exactly what we've been doing with RHEL at the core for the last 14 plus years. This has been our mission for those, those 14 plus years. And that's what's changing the world right now. You know, the architecture of, and processes needed for application to span the open hybrid cloud, they need to be integrated as the next generation platforms. Can't have this as piecemeal development with silos of, of functionality that work. It has to be integrated. Um, it has to be integrated together in order to really get a next generation platform. Let's take a look now at the application development side, because while while we're also looking at we're also looking at the application development from an architecture process and platform perspective, just as we are on the infrastructure side. You know, the same rate of innovation is change and change is happening at the, on the application side with application services and tools and platforms for our application developers. We want to move monolithic applications into a microservices architecture. So let, let's, let's, this lets us take away, really, the advantage. This lets us take advantage of, the, of that new architected infrastructure that I talk about. The applications are aware, the application tools and processes are aware of the change going on in the infrastructure layer in order to take advantage of that. You know, applications composed of microservices can bring lots of power to the enterprise and the business right now. We can eliminate the need for overhead. We can increase usability, reusability of the application. We can take full, we can make full use of this optimized infrastructure underneath. And this is really what businesses want from the application today. Businesses are driving the applications today, not necessarily the technology. We're developing technology to really drive the businesses faster. You know, with infrastructure changing so fast, and appli the application processes all, ne all need to evolve at the same rate. Waterfall, which has been tra a, a traditional process used for, for years, it's, it's a linear process. You go from one step to the next, to the next step, to the next step. That's just not practical in today's world of the business. DevOps makes the process of development, deployment, and maintenance all part of one continuous flow out into the production environment. Software development must be agile, really, to match the application demands and pace of the business growth. As the businesses are under so much competition right now, the processes must be agile to support the rapid changes that are needed in those applications to support that business. Developers and operations people must be more responsive to this custom chain, to this constant change. No longer can we have, let's put the infrastructure, let's put the applications in a bunker and not touch them for fear that they're going to break. It's constant change in order to keep up. And, and their, their, their processes must support and give them the ability to do more with less all along the way of this. That's just the way of life we're in right now, and that's the way it's going to be from, 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 from now on. When developing our applications with this changing um, processes and architectures, the, t the technology must be easy to acquire. I mean, I think this has been one of the reasons with open source and Linux why you've seen so much innovation. Because so, starting with Linux, because it was open, because it was freely available, there was just so much powerful in, uh, innovation and technology out there that was easy to acquire. It just put innovation on top of innovation on top of innovation. That's one of the reasons, and probably the main reason, why we're at such an exciting time that we have today. The application technology must be integrated with the infrastructure in order to make seamless, a seamless application development platform. It also has to be easy to use. So when we say things like seamless, that means easy to use for the developer, not just easy to require, easy to use. It has to be, it has to be easily managed and readily deployed out into the cloud. More and more, we're seeing the hybrid architecture of physical, physical virtual, private, public cloud. We've got to easily be able to move our applications across that infrastructure, and that has to be built into the application from the beginning. We must be, able, we must be ready to support um, users with new mediums like web, mobile, and whatever's next. 
We're moving so fast, we can't, the world doesn't know what the next new technology is going to be in the next three, three years. But without that right platform, modern processes and architectures, they just won't be able to reach their, their next p potential. The platform is what's going to be able to give them the tools and capability for every business to meet the, their, their full potential. Our customers are leading the charge in this. And that's the beautiful part here, that our customers, our partners, developers, individual developers in the community, competitors that work in the community, we're, they're all leading the charge on this. But most importantly, our customers got involved because these are the people that are de deploying the technologies that we develop in real world situations. You know, their reality cannot remain static and they have to mean, move forward and many of our customers are moving forward and moving from that static reality to take advantage of all this. I have a couple examples here of some, some, customer, some customer deployments out there that are really changing the world themselves. Betfair is one. They're the largest betting exchange in the world. They needed to rely less on physical networking hardware and equipment out there to simplify their network operations. So they moved to OpenStack with SDN for all their new development, test, and even in their production environment. Now they can achieve the, the higher transaction volume with less downtime. They truly are taking advantage from the application down to the infrastructure layer. The next one is Target. Target. Target spoke up here yesterday, really great talk up here yesterday. They're the second largest retailer in the, in the, in the United States. They needed to expand quickly across web, mobile, and, and really make in-store in shopping a, a one-step process, it, it, both in-store and on the web. So they embra embraced open source DevOps with OpenShift and OpenStack running, running middleware, including EAP. Now they got to a, a scalable, flexible infrastructure across all their database, across their public cloud providers, and they really they built a truly hybrid cloud environment, really capable of taking advantage of, of all of that innovation out there to, to transform themselves. You heard them yesterday. They're one of the, the furthest ahead right now. The next is Amadeus. Amadeus is the largest distributor of travel and leisure technology in the world. They needed to design and deliver a new cloud computing platform for new services and, for new services and applications for on, for on demand. They built on middleware and OpenStack to, in order to do this. They expanded to op, OpenShift v3 once OpenShift v3 went to full container. They started pre-full container and then went to OpenShift v3 with containers. Now they have an automated, streamlined operation and improved availability for all their applications. They can, they can now get new apps to market faster, they can change new apps in the market faster, and they can respond very quickly to their large customer base out there. Real world customers, in Amadeus's case, they even worked with us in development, in upstream development on functionality within OpenShift so we could get real-world requirements into our products from day one to help customers like this. You know, one of the things that's really interesting here is um, looking at these real-world customers and the problems they had to solve. They had technology problems to solve across their architecture process and, and platforms, but they also had a big culture change to, to address in IT. You know, we know about that. Culture has been the core of the open source development model from the beginning. In fact, I would say that culture is one of the things, the, the strongest things that makes the open source development model work. I also think it's one of the strongest things that makes our company at Red Hat work, is that culture. That's, that's very important. Our customers have to move to that culture. Our partners have to move to that culture. Even our competitors have to move to that culture. This is, that culture is why open source is the center of industry innovation today. I mean, you really look at it. You really look at the innovation that's happening out there today in the areas that we're talking about here today, in infrastructure, in application, de in application development. It is almost exclusively driven 
by open source in Linux. That could not happen without the people that are driving that ch technology uh, address their culture and change their culture as fast as they're changing their technology. You know, the combination of open source and culture is really how our industry has been able to tackle these big problems in the infrastructure. Things like cloud, big data, the Internet of Things, and microservices just couldn't happen without that culture change. As I said, infrastructure has changed from predominantly big bare metal to open hybrid cloud. Think about that, huge change. Network has moved from proprietary hardware, mostly hardware stacks to software-defined networking. Storage is also moving from a vertical proprietary hardware-based basis to software-defined storage. Both of these, networking and storage, have to move to st software to really support and work across that open hybrid cloud. That's the world we're in right now. And even cloud, cloud just would not be here. Cloud could never have happened without open source and Linux at the heart. It's just too big of problems for one company to be able to solve on their own. That, those are just perfect proof points to the points we're making around how this change is so big and how it's driven by this. You know, even on the application side, especially on the application side, we're also moving from this monolithic world where you have a huge code base for applications. We're touching various pieces inside, might break other, might break other pieces. Moving to, a, moving to a place where microservices and containers are changing that architecture to be more modu modular in functionality to give you the ability to not only scale across this open hybrid cloud, but to write more modular, reliable, serviceable applications. All of this happening at once is just an amazing, amazing thing. I can't emphasize enough, though, the need for a change in culture. Open source culture must permeate the entire organization. Collaboration across people and organizations is critical. I think you heard Target talk about that yesterday. You heard Jim talk about that yesterday as well. You can't realize this without going across the entire organization. This is exactly why rapid change on infrastructure and, and applications must be done and consumed in unison. One without the other, one in a vacuum without the other will get you part of the way there. Doing this in unison is really, will really give us the ability to unlock all of this for really the next generation. Open source has become the standard. I mean, that is the cool part here. I talked about Summit 1 a year ago. Back then, we were talking about going into our customers and trying to convince them that open source was real, it was enterprise ready, it was secure, and all of that. Now it's the standard. Think about that. There are 26 million GitHub repos out there. And the most active repositories, at, as you might expect, relate to the next generation of applications because the cloud is all about the application. The community of open source developers has grown to more than 10 million and still going strong. Big numbers in creating innovation. And if that's not enough to convince you that the problems we're solving are too big for one company, I don't know what is. Those are really big numbers. 10 million developers working on various problems that, ki that's, that connect in together. You know, it's, it's, it's not, but open source is not only limited to individuals. There are tens of thousands of businesses that are now involved in open source as well. This year's open source survey tells us that 65% of companies are not only using, but also contributing to open source projects. Companies that don't embrace this model will just be left behind. It'll be the old guard. They won't be able to keep up. This is the only model for the innovation to progress at such a rapid pace. This is the model that the leading companies are embracing and will embrace to really continue to be the leading companies. And it's just the beginning. You know, we talk about 12 summits and 15 years of REL. Believe it or not, it's just the beginning. Organizations have realized now that this is the only way to innovate in software. Last year's open source survey saw the enterprise 
uh, use of open source double in just six years. That's not a long time. I mean, you, you look at all these new things today and you think things happen overnight. Six years in the enterprise is not a long time. Then one of the most significant things that we do at Red Hat is make open source and innovation consumable to the enterprise. That's been our, our mission from the beginning with RHEL. Make it consumable to the enterprise. It's what we've done for the last 15 years. And just look around. It's working. I mean, I think this is evidence that's it, that it's working. We, we participate at Red Hat in every part of bringing open source technologies to the enterprise. And it's, it's a multi-staged process. From, from projects upstream to downstream development platforms, especially for the open source community, to life cycle products to run and manage enterprise workloads. We do this while keeping our connections to our customers in every phase of this process. We deliver superior solutions that solve real world problems from the beginning. We think about the problems we're solving all the way from upstream to, plat to, 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 to uh, community platforms to deployment platforms. The accelerated, this is the accelerating pace of innovation. It's, it's, it's just fascinating to be part of this as it's happening. So let's bring this all together now, because I'm going to show you a couple of examples. From app development to the next generation infrastructure that it relies upon. There's a convergence in architecture, process, and platforms. And this, this convergence is what's going to bring our entire industry to, the, to its next phase. The next generation architecture is going to be built on microservices. The next generation process is DevOps, and the next generation platform is open hybrid cloud. And they all work and change and move and innovate in unison. That's the key part. Let's talk a bit about it now in practice, because you know, we get up here and we talk about this, but let's really go down a little bit and talk about this in practice. How do we apply all of this to every, the everyday life of application development? You know, before you begin cutting code with most app development, you really have to have a strategy about what integration technologies you're going to do, your process automation, your data services. You really have to think about that up front. So you have to pick those things before you begin. I mean, from a Red Hat world, for, for integration, it's things like JBoss and Fuse. From a process automation world, it's things like JBoss rules management system. And for data services, it's things like JBoss data virtualization and JBoss data grid. Those are the things in our world that we address those, those, those pieces with. For custom application development, you have JBoss Enterprise Platform, EAP. To tie these things together, you then pick an appropriate framework, such as we have up here. As a developer, and this, this is a framework that as a developer you work in every day. You're probably the most comfortable in this. You probably work in different frameworks across different applications, but this is something you know well. After making these choices, you still need a lightweight run, way to run these environments. This is where Linux has been re-architected over the years to bring about things like Linux containers. Containers really give you the power to combine the choices that I talk about here and run them in a cons with, with the OS and run those in a consistent way within your production environment. That's what containers brings, brings to this whole equation. This choice of services and frameworks is central to how your application runs. It affects everything from the attributes to performance to debugging to security, everything across that but it needs to be run and built on a stable, secure foundation. With RHEL containers, we provide stability, security, and consistency across any footprint from any piece in the, all the way out to the, to the production deployment environment, across all of that. We bring it across bare metal, or across virtual machines, across private clouds, across public clouds. That same stability, same platform, same consistency. But these choices are just the beginning and only the beginning. 
As you develop, you continually evolve your application. It's just what software development is. You add dependencies, you deploy, you test. All of this change is captured in the new layers of your containers. You iterate many times a day until your platform is, until your problem is solved, or your functionality in your platform is complete, is complete over and over and over. It's how software is developed. It's just how it's developed and how it's refined. It's been like that since the beginning of time. This process will get a developer really to a functional app. This is how a developer gets to a, a functional app. But we all know the comment from developers, well, it, it, it worked on my machine. It's just not enough. You now need to pull in the rest of your team to move closer to production. Your team tests and integrates your code with their work. This is, this is what the, where the concept of continuous integration comes in, bringing together all aspects of the development process and now completing your application. For cloud, for cloud native container-based development, the need for consistency across the development team is still one of the most paramount things that you have to worry about. A consistent container development environment and platform is critical to get the stability once you go out into production. This is really what's going to allow a fast pace from development to the test lab all the way out into production. This capability is especially critical as we move to a microservices-based architecture. You may have, we may have hundreds of services that make up one single app running in various platforms or, or footprints across that, that open hybrid cloud environment. The lab environment is now where you can exercise the capabilities needed in production before the business is dependent on it. Things like scaling, resiliency to failure, um, the, the deployments themselves, how to deploy themselves, all operating as close to a production environment as possible. This is your last shot. The lab is your last and final shot and final preparation before a microservices-based application goes into production. Once your team is comfortable with that everything is tested, integrated, and you're satisfied, your, your app is now ready to, for production. You can take the same container developed with the same code on the same platform and now move it into production, bringing the consistency with you, building in the consistency from the beginning. This all, all on top of that cons consistent bits that were developed, test, and deployed throughout that entire process. As you move from a developer laptop to the lab services, to the production service, servers themselves. Production now adds the high availability in infrastructure and integration with storage and networking. You now get that integrated because you've built on that consistent platform from the beginning as you plug into the production environment. Your, your containers connect to these services now. This adds the robustness and scale that you need for the application to have all its services to do its job and to run across that new infrastructure. As we know in our industry, getting the app to production is a major accomplishment, and it begins the life cycle of that application. But now that you're in the life cycle of that application, you really have to think about ops. And these things coming together is really the DevOps model. That really is the DevOps model. It's used consistently across these environments from the beginning from laptop to lab to production environment. And one of the critical foundation for the application to build its process on, as we talked about, it's middleware. Middleware services are essential for any modern application to work at scale. This week, we announced JBoss EAP7, which was built natively for microservices applications. And hand in hand with the containers that were built in the RHEL operating system, ready to use containers from day one. That's what we talk about, about these two worlds coming together and the innovation integrated together from the beginning. We think of this as a fitting technological leap forward, marking 10 years since Red Hat acquired JBoss. One of the JBoss guys said to me this morning that JBoss acquired Red Hat but I, I don't know. Some days it's one way, some days it's, it's the next. 
During those 10 years, we focused on the needs of the developers in this product line. From the first code of, line of code that they write to their production applications. We've been doing this for 10 years. From upstream communities to open source development platforms. We've brought upstream innovation to the developers in this 10 year period. We've expanded that portfolio of JBoss from one, from one product to over 12 in, that, in middleware in that 10 year period. And now we, we think we have the technology that they can truly be ready to build apps for deployment in the hybrid cloud environment. But, it, but in order to take full advantage of the open hybrid cloud, you need to align these two groups that have st historically not worked well together. I think you saw a little of that in the JBoss comment with the operating system guys and the middleware guys. Not historically working well this morning. Of course, today we've got Mark Little in a red hat shirt, which is one of the most amazing things that I've seen in my 15 years here. Let's give Mark a hand for that. <laughs> We've talked through the development cycle a lot on, on the application. Now let's show how we can seamlessly align that with the operations staff who has to take the, the infrastructure forward. The, the operations teams, they're responsible for the security, performance, and reliability of the infrastructure that the apps run on top of. Let's take a look at how they might handle a security issue, for example, that happens in this new environment. A good example is the heartbeat bleed issue that we saw last year. We could also talk about Venom or Poodle or Shellshock or even a recent glib security buffer overflow problem we had three or four months ago. That, that, that problem actually affected almost every single container on the, planet, on the planet. Responding to these security events is one of the most important things that the operations staff does and is very responsible for. Here's how it usually happens. First, a problem is detected in the base container that the application depends on. Second, after it's detected, they have to go out and change it and bring it back in. Now they have to know, first, they, they, they then have to know which containers are affected. They need to patch those containers. They need to update those containers. This requires recomposing, recomposing the application on a new base image to fix that, to fix that hole. Because the complexity of scale is involved here, this change must be done automatically. It's too complex and too far-reaching to think that a, that a human can do this without tools and in, in, in in, in automation in those tools. While this process might sound like it's the exception, it actually may need to be done on a weekly, daily, in some cases even an hourly basis to potentially cross millions of disparate containers that are sitting across this architecture. To do this effectively, a platform that the operations team can depend on is absolutely required. And automation is a must. It's just too complex to try to do it without that. This isn't the only case security in, in security updates. It's not the only case as applications are constantly changing as well. But as Linux containers marries the application content with the Linux operating system, you need to be able to evolve the application in, o o in the OS pieces in lockstep from source that you can trust from a trusted provider. This creates a constant stream of updates which need to be applied with little or zero downtime. We're talking about production environments. You need to, you need to be able to make aggressive changes but you also must be able to revert back, revert those changes out if you need to. And this must all be done in a consistent, predictable, reliable way. It's a production environment. Once you've removed the limits of slow processes and manual paths, you'll be able to move to, at the velocity that you've always wanted. Red Hat's 15 years of providing critical operation platforms through RHEL that drive the majority of Fortune 500 companies allows us to understand and address the needs of operations at any scale and complexity. We do this all day. We live for this. We've done this for 15 years. This operational experience that we've grown and grown and grown over the years, combined with our 10 years of experience 
working with developer-based technologies puts us, I think, in a unique position in the industry as, as at the same time open source drives that in innovation in both the infrastructure and the application level layer. This, this realization of apps and infrastructure will realize DevOps. This is true DevOps. It's changing the IT industry at a pace that we've never seen before. And we build on our experience every day to lead the industry in open source based products. Today we're widening that gap, bringing a new set of products to market, focused squarely on Linux container based development and deployment. Yesterday, at a press conference, we announced our product family consistent of container solutions that span the entire open hybrid cloud. First, Red Hat OpenShift Container, lo Red Hat OpenShift Container Local for the developer, Red Hat OpenShift Container Lab for the lab environment, Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform for your production environment. This con consistency across a, co a, co a consistent platform from development to lab and test, to deployment, to the production, all the way across the open hybrid cloud, will allow you to innovate in a way, in, in a way that no other offering from no other company can bring together. We're really excited about this, to now drive containers into the industry with these offerings. Red Hat Cloud Suite extends upon this, to add management and private cloud capabilities to help our customers go mainstream and get the full advantage and full realization of open hybrid cloud all the way out to the public cloud as well. And beyond providing the industry leading products in this space, Red Hat can also help our customers tr transform their application development to take advantage of this open source innovation in a form that scales with them in their own enterprise environment with the recently announced Red Hat Open Innovation Labs. We're really driving this from products to services to tools to management to move this more quickly than we ever have into mainstream. In my, in my many years in the industry, I've just never ever seen convergence of operations and applications development, people and technologies like this before. This is a pace I've never seen before. And like so many other things, this just not would, this would not have been possible without the power of open source development. That's what's driving it. You're driving it. Our customers are driving it. It's happening every single day. This convergence will move architectures to microservices. It will move processes to agile, and it will move platforms to cloud native platforms. It's happening today right in front of us. And on this foundation, on this new foundation, you will build and are building the next generation IT. This goes well beyond continuous development, well beyond continuous integration. This marks the beginning of continuous innovation. And this is the point that we're starting right now. The last 15 years have just been a setup to get us to this point. You know, and you don't have to believe me, guys like me love to talk about this stuff. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up a guy and his team, the most kick-ass team in this industry that really will show you this technology in practice. So to get me off and to get me stop talking about this, let me introduce Burr Sutter. Thank you.